We're quite dreamy, disillusioned. Many things are hidden and many things are very secretive. So for example, you go out with the girls and you have some drinks. You have three glasses of the red wine and now you're tipsy. In comes this con artist and he says, I have this great opportunity for you. Sign up right away. I want you to you know, get a second mortgage on your house. And you're like, oh, he's kind of cute. <laughs> It must be okay, sure, no problem. What happens is that you're in this, this, this natural fog. You're not thinking clearly, you're confused, you're very emotional. Mentally, you're actually at the very, very bottom. And everything looks better than what it really is. It, it's like you have rose-colored glasses on. So everything looks really rosy. Oh yeah, this is great. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, let's get it back. And then, when you transition from the seventh, which is where you're mentally at your lowest, into your first period, where you're mentally at your highest, you say to yourself, oh my god, I'm so glad I didn't get involved. I would have lost everything. Okay. When something comes across your desk, when something comes across your life, where you need to invest money, you need to invest emotional energy, not necessarily spiritual, that's a different subject. Uh, physical, your efforts, your soul power, your willpower. Okay? Uh, you want to think two, three, four times about this. You want to get a second opinion, a third opinion. You want to treat this thing like it's a poison. Okay? Nine times out of ten, four times out of five, it's going to be not so good for you. Very, very true. I know one individual who got lured in by a businesswoman. He was an upcoming author, um, had some great things to share to the world, and this particular um, savior, which is how he saw her, the savior, she promised him the world. And what she sold him was her agenda, and there was nothing for him. So what he did was he end up putting his confidence in her and he signed his rights away to that particular book or set of books, series of books. That meant that he's no longer the owner of his intellectual property. She is the owner. So when he goes back and he saw that the book needs to be updated, he, he needed to change information because certain things were wrong or at the time when he wrote, it was it was good. It was good enough. But as you progress, he won't he couldn't. He's no longer the owner. He'll get his dollar per book or two dollar per book and got his name and lights and so forth. But he can't do anything. So that book stands, correct or incorrect, flawed or or uh, perfect, stands forever. Okay? That is the power of the seventh period. We're going to talk about an energetic curve as well. So we'll show you how to plan and how the energy flows. But the seventh period is really, really one that should be handled intuitively, not mentally. Certainly not emotionally. Because your emotions, as we'll show on the, the intensity wave graph, emotionally you're very, very high. So, yeah, you're excited. You're like a little kid that gets lured in by somebody with a, with a lollipop and the kid gets abducted. Okay, so that's the, the feel of this. But that doesn't mean the seventh period is all bad. Okay. But for the moment, yes. Um, all this you've told us is about us individually, but many times in many parts of life we are doing things together with a partner or somebody else. But how do you sort of work that because you may be a different different kind of exercise and you're making one decision. You don't want a short answer or a long answer. It's up to you. <laughs> optimal answer, maybe. <laughs> no, okay. uh, the long answer, which also could be the short answer, is our lives are very varied, correct? There's pain, suffering, joy, happiness. One extreme to the other, and sometimes nothing happens. Nothing happening can be good, and nothing happening can be bad. Okay? We meet all kinds of people, all different tastes, smells, flavors, colors everything. Part of that experience of life is you moving through it without a bloody clue how any of this works. 
okay? When you become to, to learn about your life and some very basic principles, and that's why I got really excited when I first learned this and said, my God, people need to know this. It's because you can take more control, more power over your life, the decisions and the results or the outcome. But, but my friend's doing it and he says it's good and his friend's doing it and this is, you got to get on, it's, you know, are you going to say no to that? It's very tough. Mom says yes, dad says yes, TV says yes, librarian says yes, police officer says yes, Donald Trump says yes, Lee Kuan Yew says yes, everybody's saying yes. But then you say, seventh period, I don't think so, not for me. Okay. Now, that that they got into can work for all of them. Because maybe they're in their fourth period, or they're in their second period, or they're in the sixth period. Okay. But they're not in the seventh period. We'll show you the energetic curve in a little bit on why you should start projects in your second year. Okay? So if you have some understanding of when you initiate something or when something comes into your life, you can make better choices and better decisions, and then you have a different outcome. But what happens is that you know, life gives you what it gives you by default. There's a saying that goes to the tune of, um, either you decide or it will be decided for you. Okay? So, if you're willing to let someone else or something, the creator, God, an architect of the universe, if you decide that they know best for you, no problem. But sometimes by someone else deciding, there is a lot of pain and difficulty and suffering. And I'm not saying that we can't escape that. But when it comes to making a financial decision where you invest all of your money and it's one week, two weeks to go before your birthday, three months later, the investment has dried up and you're left with nothing but bankruptcy and creditors after you and you lose your home and your kids can no longer go to the private schools and now you're eating nothing but dry bread and black coffee. You know, I don't, I don't know if the creator or God would want you to have that experience or not. But what experience do you want to have? Okay. Do you want to have a rich, a richer experience? Less pain, less suffering? Pain and suffering is not always bad. It can lead to something else that's greater. Because sometimes you have to go up or down to go up. I love traffic circles. Where we have these um, uh, four-leaf clovers in the West. Where you have track coming from, from four different directions, and you've got to turn right to go left. You've got to go 270 degrees right so you can go left. So sometimes that's not so bad. But the point that I'm making is that with a little more awareness, and just knowing about this seventh period, if that's all you take from today, I mean, God bless you, it's fantastic. It's something you can use forever and ever, okay? Even starting a job. Well, I have to start the job. No, you don't. Nana's brother, for example, has been hating his job. He's in the seventh period, but very emotional. He's not thinking properly. It's like he's intoxicated, right? He's been at this, 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 this new job for six or eight or nine months. He's not happy with it. And it's to the point where I, I, I've got to make a change. I've got to make a change. So I sat down with him and I said, just wait. You've got like four weeks, three weeks to go. Just be patient. Oh, I want to sell out resumes. No, no, no. Just be patient. And what can happen is by shifting into a new year with new themes, maybe that exact same job suddenly becomes wonderful. So sometimes the only thing that changes is you. Okay? Yes. 